Hello, how are you? Doubt is a form of arthritis in which sodium urate crystals accumulate in the joints, causing pain and inflammation. It is so often found at the base of the first toe that it has given the disease another name, podagra, a Greek word for feet, but crystals can also accumulate under the skin and can form kidney stones. The first symptoms usually appear suddenly and in the form of crises, which can become more severe and prolonged over time. It mainly affects adult men and women after menopause. Doubt increases the risk of cardiovascular diseases such as myocardial infarction and angina pectoris. Treatment consists of medication and dietary advice. We will review the main characteristics of gout, what medications are available, when they are necessary, and what lifestyle changes need to be made. Uric acid is a substance produced by the body when it breaks down purines. Purines are waste products that occur naturally in all body tissues and also in some foods, such as animal entrails, red meat and game, seafood and oily fish, sardines, anchovies, etc. Doubt is caused by a higher than normal level of uric acid in the blood, which is called hyperuricemia. Under normal circumstances, the body eliminates excess uric acid in the urine. But if the body produces too much or too little, it can build up in the form of sodium urate crystals, especially in the joints, in the surrounding tissue such as ligaments or tendons, or under the skin. The body then reacts and generates the symptoms of gout, either acutely, an arthritis flare-up, or with chronic symptoms. Patients with gout have an increased risk of developing kidney stones. However, it should be borne in mind that not everyone with hyperuricemia develops gout and therefore drug treatment is not always required. In any case, it should be noted that the disease can be completely cured with specific treatment. There are different diseases and lifestyle habits that can increase the risk of developing gout. Obesity high blood pressure, consumption of large amounts of alcohol, mainly beer and hard liquor, consuming large amounts of meat, seafood, fish and high fructose drinks, taking certain medications, such as diuretics, used in the treatment of high blood pressure, low-dose aspirin, or some chemotherapy drugs. There are also other factors over which we have little or no control. Gender and age. Doubt affects more men than women. In men it is more common between the ages of 30 and 50, while in women it tends to appear after the menopause. Family history. Doubt can run in families. Certain diseases. Extensive psoriasis, hypothyroidism, diabetes, certain blood diseases, or chronic renal failure are diseases that can increase the risk of gout. Doubt is often associated with obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol, conditions which, incidentally, are also risk factors for cardiovascular problems. The acute manifestations of gout are in the form of a flare-up of arthritis, tendonitis, inflammation of the tendon, or bursitis, inflammation of the fluid-filled sac or bursa that protects the joint and cushions the tendons from rubbing together. The symptoms appear suddenly, almost always at night, and the crisis usually affects only one joint, often in one leg or foot. The intense inflammation and pain is aggravated by movement and superficial contact with the area, which may also become red and warm. These flare-ups usually disappear within a week, but if nothing is done, the attacks often intensify, lengthen, and become more frequent. Chronic manifestations of the disease are caused by the gradual accumulation of sodium urate crystals, which form lumps under the skin and near the joint 
joint. These are called tophi. They sometimes cause lesions in the bones and joints. These lumps do not usually hurt, but they can have some chronic inflammation, which does hurt, and affects joint mobility, which can lead to some disability. Finally, high uric acid excretion by the kidney can facilitate the formation of kidney stones. Doubt has three main phases. 1. Acute attack. This is a sudden attack with inflammation and pain that initially affects only one joint, usually the big toe, but over time may affect more. 2. Period between attacks. If gout is left untreated, the time between acute attacks is shortened and the attacks become increasingly severe and prolonged. A second attack of gout usually occurs within two years of the first attack. 3. Topos. If gout attacks occur frequently, or if hyperuricemia continues for years, tophaceous gout may develop with a large accumulation of sodium uric crystals. This can lead to bone erosion, joint damage, and deformities. Due to the various pharmacological treatments currently available, this phase is almost a rarity. Gout is usually diagnosed by detecting sodium urate crystals under a microscope in a sample of synovial fluid, the clear, viscous fluid that lubricates the joints, or by detecting tophi, which are removed with a needle. If fluid cannot be taken, the doctor can also diagnose gout on the basis of symptoms, progression, and a uric acid blood test. But it should be made clear that not everyone with hyperuricemia develops gout, and not everyone with gout has a permanent excess of uric acid. X-rays can show joint damage in long-term cases of gout and help rule out other causes of inflammation. Ultrasound and CT scans can be helpful in detecting the presence of sodium urate crystals in the joints. Two types of treatment are available for different purposes. Treatment of the acute attack of gout to control pain and inflammation during the days of the episode, which should be started as soon as possible. Why? Uric acid lowering therapy to prevent the disease from progressing. This involves taking drugs and making some lifestyle changes on an ongoing basis to reduce uric acid in the blood. This prevents new crystals from forming and helps dissolve existing crystals. The way to monitor how effective these measures are is through regular blood tests. Not everyone with gout requires uric acid lowering therapy. If you have few and mild gout attacks, you may only need to treat the acute attack. However, if there is progression of joint damage or more severe gout develops, uric acid lowering therapy may be necessary. Symptoms of acute episodes may improve with rest of the affected region, application of cold to the area and the use of anti-inflammatory drugs or colchicine. Colchicine is also effective in preventing episodes of acute inflammation. Corticosteroids, orally, parenterally or by intraarticular infiltration, are also effective. The physician must decide which drug is most appropriate based on several factors, such as the risk of bleeding, the condition of the kidneys, and whether or not the patient has previously suffered from stomach or intestinal ulcers. Medications used in uric acid lowering therapy reduce the production of uric acid or promote its elimination by the kidneys. They are allopurinol inhibits uric acid production and has been considered the standard treatment for decades. It is started at a low dose, 
which is progressively increased until certain concentrations of uric acid in the blood are reached. It should be noted that in cases of kidney disease, a lower dose is used. Although adverse effects are rare, it may cause a decrease in platelets and white blood cells, skin rash, diarrhea, and fever. Febuxostat also inhibits uric acid production and is usually used when allopurinol is not tolerated or is contraindicated. The most frequent adverse effects are alterations in liver tests, gastrointestinal discomfort, headache, edema, accumulation of body fluids, and skin rashes. It is not recommended in patients with severe cardiovascular disease. Lysinurate increases uric acid elimination in the kidneys. This is a recently marketed drug used in conjunction function with allopurinol, mainly in severe cases that do not respond to the usual treatments. The most frequent adverse effects are related to kidney function and for this reason regular monitoring is necessary. On the other hand, for patients who do not respond to any treatment, drugs that act on other pathways involved in gouty inflammation, such as canakinumab, are being studied. Non-pharmacological treatment to reduce the level of uric acid in the blood and complications consists of following a balanced diet, avoiding fasting and large meals, avoiding large quantities of meat and seafood, limiting the consumption of foods containing purines and sugary foods, and avoiding alcoholic drinks, especially beer and high-proof liquor. Drinking plenty of water, maintaining a healthy weight and exercising regularly can also help control the disease. That's all for today. I hope I have provided some useful information. In any case, all the best. Thank you very much.